2022 was a stellar year for anime. Hundreds of diverse shows, some pushing boundaries with great stories, diverse characters, and wonderful animation. This year, I tried to watch as much as I could with the time available to me. I was pleasantly surprised with the wide selection of titles, even with the not-so-great ones. All in all, I still celebrate the effort to bring fun and entertainment into people's lives. As is tradition in this channel, I'm here to give you what I think are the top 10 anime of 2022. Now, please do keep in mind before I get some comments, this is just my opinion. A list about fictional shows and fictional characters. In no way does this invalidate your list and personal taste. With all of that said, here are the best anime of 2022. The night can be a terrifying place for many. Some may perceive it as dangerous and scary, but others will see it as a time of jubilation, to break free of the shackles of the day and let themselves go through parties and vices. I know I make most of my YouTube content in the dead hours of the night. There's something comforting about the quiet and peaceful state you can find yourself at late hours. Sometimes it may feel like the nighttime is free of obligations from everyday life, and we may not want to lose that by sleeping early. There's an lure to being out at night and basking in the opposite side of society. In Call of the Night, we explore these themes, but through the lens of a teenager, young Ko Yamori, a boy that has grown disillusioned with everyday life, his obligations with school, friends, and family. Suffering from insomnia, he decides to venture out into the night, and on a particular night, encounters a girl called Nazuna, who is very different than him. Free of inhibitions, she enjoys the night and the freedom it provides. Offering to help with his problem, she ultimately reveals herself to be a vampire, yet they don't behave as we might think. Yamori is fascinated by the idea they represent and desires to be turned into one. However, the catch is you have to fall in love with the vampire in order to become one. Call of the Night is a stylized coming-of-age story for Yamori as he deals with wanderlust, adolescence, and finding true love, yet he's an unconventional person that isn't into the normal things we like. He's yearning for the freedom of the mundane, something we could all relate to at some point in our lives. Hell, some of us are still going through that, right? This desire is reflected in his affection towards Nazuna and the vampires. At first, the story is mostly focused on the budding relationship between the two leads, but as he learns more about her world, danger starts to peek its ugly head. Visually, this was my favorite show of the year. A phenomenal job by Liden Films and Tomoyuki Itamura, a director that's no stranger to vampire stories. There are some fantastic set pieces in this series with really eerie, beautifully colored renditions of the night sky as it illuminates the city. The character designs contrast well as they emulate Kotoyama's distinct manga art style. If you are in for an unconventional romance with fun, out-of-the-norm characters, great ambiance, and visual direction, then look no further than Call of the Night. Akiba Made War. There's always a surprise hit every year, and this time it was the maid's turn. Akiba Made War is a violent action comedy parody of many things, but at its core, it's a story about friendship and the passion for the work that you love. An anime original from one of my favorite studios, Progressive Animation Works, the show cleverly blends the stylish world of maids and otaku culture with the violence of Yakuza films, while also being influenced by Japanese. Japanese exploitation films from the 70s and 80s to tell a story about maid cafes of Akihabara and the rampant violence that occurs. We follow young Nagomi who dreams of stardom as she becomes a new maid for the pig hut or the Ton Tokoton Cafe. However, she quickly realizes everything is not as it seems. This show is packed with goofy characters that are highly enjoyable and you will immediately love and care for them, Ranko being one of my favorite anime characters of the year. Year. This show definitely throws you for a loop. Some viewers are not accustomed to the over-the-top violence, and the genre clash may put some people off, but do give it a shot. The show is very creative with its storytelling. Aside from the initial shock of its premise, the story takes its time by developing the relationship of the Oinky Doink Cafe members while also throwing them in episodic violent adventures, as they do their best to keep business afloat. Introducing the peaceful Nagomi in a sea of violence was for the best, as she is that shiny 
shining beacon of what could be, and her peaceful ways cause a ripple effect in a city drenched in the blood of countless victims. I admire and like stories with characters that want to change violence through peace, positivity, and optimism, and you get that here with our main character. Visually, the show does a fantastic job of showing the parallels between the gore, blood, and violence with the colorful glitz and glamour of maid and otaku culture, all while presenting some awesomely choreographed shootouts and fights. Akiba made war and knows how to have fun, it's a hyper-violent fun time, and is fully aware of its absurd premise even when its characters are deadly serious. Spy Family was the very definition of wholesomeness in 2022, a highly enjoyable slice of life with spy themes throughout, a collaboration between Wit Studios and Cloverworks. In it, we follow Twilight, a spy investigating the movements of Donovan Desmond, the chairman of Ostania's National Unity Party, who is threatening peace efforts between Ostania and West Dallas. Infiltrating enemy lines as Lloyd Forger, Twilight puts together a pretend family so he can send the child to the school Desmond's son goes to. Only the child, Anya, is a mind reader, and his wife happens to be an assassin. That in a nutshell is the wacky premise of Spy Family, but where the series excels is in the interactions between the family. At first we know they aren't linked by blood, but as the episodes go by, we feel that emotional bonds start to form. The dynamic between the main cast is the greatest thing about Spy Family, from Lloyd trying to balance his work as an elite spy and avoiding suspicion as a father and husband, to Anya's mind-reading abilities leading into some comedic moments, and your secretly working as an assassin for a mysterious organization while navigating the responsibilities of being a parent. Part of the fun here is knowing Lloyd nor Yor are unaware of each other's true identities, or that Anya knows their true professions. Wonderfully animated by two titans of the industry, Spy Family crossed genres from action and espionage to comedy and slice of life, balancing the action-packed scenes with heartwarming family moments. While the main plot may seem simple at first glance, it is that very balance between missions and family time that makes the show so endearing. You find characters that are lonely and distraught, but through fateful circumstances are placed together under one roof and experience the warmth and love that only a family can provide. A full a decade passed, but we finally saw the return of Bleach in 2022, a triumph for the fandom as we get to see the final arc of Kubo's manga adapted into animation. Having 10 years of experience since the last batch of episodes, Studio Pierrot tackled this revival with great force and conviction. You really see the growth of their artistry. The stylish battles, sense of style, great lore, and trusty shonen tropes are all back. The animation staff really poured their artistic vision on this, beautifully enhancing Kubo's penship. Episodes with big, epic fights and moments are greatly enhanced by the scenery and remixed score from the great Shiro Sagisu. Funny enough, the nature of the Thousand Year Blood War arc really lend itself well to a 10-year wait, as the urgency of its subject matter made the story resonate more with audiences that grew up with Bleach and are now revisiting their favorite characters. In this final story, the Soul Society is invaded by the Wandenreich, setting in motion a path of chaos, destruction, death, and rebirth. The enemy's assault is brutal and shocking. Our main hero, due to some cleverly placed plot devices, is unable to assist, leading the Soul Reapers to confront their past and a bloody history that is now brought to light. Most importantly to this story is Ichigo's growth. Yes, he was pretty overpowered in previous arcs, but this opponent is unlike anything faced before, and in classic shonen fashion, our main hero has to dig deep and break free of that rainfall of sadness to choose the right path and unlock his true potential. A lot of lore gets thrown around in the first set of episodes. Things are revealed that were on audiences' minds since the very beginning of the series, and it was honestly so gratifying to see. Backstories and motivations behind certain characters take the spotlight and really expand on an already large world. This new Thousand Year Blood arc is off to an amazing action-packed start that I hope will be able to stick the landing and provide the epic conclusion fans have been clamoring for. 
Made in Abyss return with a bang in 2022. Love it or hate it, the series knows how to shock its audience, but also tell a wonderfully dark, twisted, and impactful story. I think by now we can all move past the craziness and initial shock factor of season one and just admit we are in for some craziness right out the gate. This time around, the story is divided into time frames. We follow the main trio of Reg, Rico, and Nanachi as they arrive at the sixth layer, the capital of the Unreturned. The second story takes us back in time to the first adventurers who ventured into the Golden City and their harrowing journey. The city is home to a village which has their own culture, currency, and language. It is also protected from the Curse of the Abyss. However, its inhabitants cannot leave. Our main trio discovered that Rico's white whistle has been stolen from them, so they move into the city to learn more about it. In it, they meet a whole cast of characters that have been living there for many years and provide some clues as to the dangers of the sixth layer and how it leads back to the story of the first settlers, the Ganja Squad. The art on this season is just as great as the first one and the movie. The scenery and character designs are great and it of course features that emblematic darkness that the franchise is known for. This time featuring some truly spine chilling moments that reflect the true nature of man and what we're capable of doing. I won't spoil the fun with what happens, but this season's writing and story is leagues above the first. It shows a maturity in its narrative and characters. Yes, the struggle is still there. So it is the grotesque imagery, but to turn away from it would be a disservice to one of the core lessons from the show. We move forward, not back. Like the kind-hearted Rico, we have to find the courage to tackle what life throws at us. No matter how hard life gets, we persevere and find new ways to improve and continue marching forward. Dance, dance, danzur. Bit of a warning here, I know very little about the world of dance and could have cared less for a story like this, but I was intrigued to pick up this show. Chainsaw Man may have gotten everyone's attention this year, but this was the underrated show of MAPPA's catalog. In it, we explore the world of ballet, the topics of toxic masculinity, child abuse, first loves, and finding of one's true passion in life, regardless of circumstances. Dance Dance follows Junpei, who is fascinated by ballet, yet when he tries to practice it, he faces a lot of prejudice from his school friends. After the tragic death of his father, Junpei is now expected to be the man of the house and decides to pick up martial arts like his father. It isn't until meeting Miyako and her finding out about his love for ballet that it awakens Junpei's passion for the art form. This show is a wonderful introduction to that world of ballet, expertly animated by MAPPA with great attention to detail on dance routines and human anatomy. The story is well done, evenly paced, and filled with great characterizations. One of the biggest takeaways, however, was the discussion on masculinity and the prejudice ballet faces from the mainstream crowd. Junpei's journey towards finding himself is riddled with insecurities as he's constantly pushed back by his friends and his own worries over what people might think of his passion for ballet. As the story progresses, we get introduced to another character that has suffered from past trauma and abuse. He eventually becomes a rival to our protagonist as they butt heads while navigating their adolescence. Honestly, it takes some time, but Junpei's behavior changes throughout the story and his determination to succeed lead to some great moments in the series that I highly recommend watching. Give Dance Dance Danzur a try and you'll be pleased at how human of a story it really is. Back in late spring to early summer, I was sick with COVID. It just so happened that as the new season was popping up, one show stood above the rest. With its intriguing mystery, I tuned in week after week and it sort of became my comfort food to help ease the sickness. Summertime Rendering is the type of mystery show that keeps you on the edge of your seat, each episode answering your questions while presenting new mysteries at the end. A great mashup of tropes, mixing horror and supernatural elements with a good mystery thriller. Summertime Rendering is about the strange happenings in a small island where Shinpei's childhood friend Ushio has died. As he returns to his hometown for two years for her funeral, he starts suspecting that something's off in regards to Ushio's demise and that someone else might be in danger. The mystery that soon unfolds will shake the island to its core and for us the viewer will lead to many rewatched episodes to uncover all the details and theories explored. What was great about this anime is that it took its time telling 
telling its story across 24 episodes, dividing itself into two parts, one with the comprehensive theories and mystery elements while also having another part of the plot while also having the other part to be more visually stimulating for the audience with more action-packed scenes. The characters in Summertime Rendering are all greatly written. The characterizations are phenomenal on this one. Shinpei is a smart main character. Even in the worst of times, he knows what he's doing and will not try to lose his temper. He's not without flaws, however. The character learns throughout the series and tries to correct himself in order to solve the mystery at hand. The main antagonistic force has some pretty straightforward motivations, but the way they weave through the cast and narrative is expertly done in my opinion. To bolster these claims of mine, we gotta mention the fact that OLM Studios did their best work to date. The whole scenery, background art, character designs, animation, and more are all top tier work and beautiful to look at. You really felt immersed in this world and wanted to cheer along the cast in a very exciting yet horrifyingly emotional ride. If for some reason you enjoy conversations of anime and manga on social media, for better or worse, Chainsaw Man was unavoidable this year. Ever since the trailer dropped a year before, a hype has been brewing for this series. A chaotic, dark masterpiece from the mind of Tatsuki Fujimoto, we follow the adventures of Denji as he was transformed into a human-devil hybrid with chainsaws coming out of his arms and heads, an ability he will use to fight other devils plaguing the world. In exchange, he will finally get a shred of humanity as he now has food, housing, and the foolish hope of a romance with the high-ranking official that took him in, Makima. The story of Chainsaw Man is one with a lot of stylized action, violence, and the darkness of humanity. Denji's bad luck and inexperience with life is reflected in the plot's usage of fan service. Him being offered some kind of sexual reward for fighting and nearly dying for it highlights the insanity of the series. That world is unlike ours. There's a constant dread looming in the the air. Each character in this series is rather unhinged and dealing with the devastation brought upon by devils. Visually, this is MAPPA's finest effort to date. They truly stepped up their game to bring us a beautiful adaptation in all its fun goriness. Using their vast talent pool, the show's animation is incredibly detailed and fluid. The devil creatures are all grotesque and deformed. The CGI used in this show is quite excellent as well, giving the action a kinetic and dynamic feel while also appearing more more realistic, with great lighting and shading. The director for this adaptation mentioned how well they wanted to honor the original source material, and I can't help but feel like they poured their hearts out for every scene. The shots and compositions, even the most minute detail, is rather impressive to behold. In a sea of shonen and isekai action, Chainsaw Man stands above its peers with its stellar production, memorable character designs, and a unique vision that blends horror, comedy, and the supernatural to bring an unconventional story story that will stick with you long after you're done. Mob Psycho returned for an emotionally jam-packed series finale. Bones did a phenomenal job all throughout the series. The pacing, direction, dialogue, character designs, and amazing choreographed fighting sequences, providing us, dare I say, Bones' best work to date. You could really see the love and effort in producing the series. The final season of Mob Psycho 100 contains a little bit of everything. We continue seeing Mob's progression as he faces challenges that aren't strictly limited to the supernatural, instead things that normal teenagers face. And when the focus wasn't strictly on him, the show had time to examine its supporting cast, all unique in their own way. It was great to see Shigeo's journey from a wholesome but frail boy at the start of the series to a much more confident young man towards the end. Even in his bleakest moments, he never lost faith in himself and the friendships forged. Mob's wholesome personality was infectious and influenced those around him to be better people, as well as help out our main character to the best of their abilities. The highlight of this final season definitely going towards Dimple and Regan. Their respective relationships are wonderful, and while Regan can be a bit of a trickster to most, we all know that he's a good mentor to those he genuinely cares about. Mob's journey may be over, but what a great ride it was. Masquerading a boy's journey into adulthood with the supernatural, superpowers, psychics, and other shenanigans definitely made for quite the experience.
Before we go to the number one spot, you might be upset already that a certain show was not mentioned. Fear not. If it were up to me, this video would be a top 20 instead. So here are 12 shows that barely made the list. These are still fantastic and highly recommended. These are your honorable mentions. Bochi The Rock, a wonderful mix of comedy and compelling character growth. Hitori Goto's journey from a shy, socially awkward teenager with immense talent to the guitarist of a band was the hilarious and moving journey of 2022. Cloverworks knocked it out of the park in a story that resonated with me in unexpected ways. As someone that suffers from social anxiety, seeing Bochi's growth filled me with joy. I was constantly rooting for her to succeed. However, the series' strength doesn't just fall on her shoulders. The rest of the band all provide great moments as well. It was hard heartwarming and wholesome to see the formation of the Kesuko band with members that are just as unique and greatly written as our main character. Sometimes you have to take a leap of faith and blindly trust that new experiences will be good for you. As the other bandmates embrace our main character, we see her becoming less shy and more expressive of her feelings, but not without some withdrawals. It isn't a magical blink or you'll miss it achievement. In that aspect, Bochi the Rock does a great job of using social anxiety as a device for both introspection and comedy. Artistically, the series is a home run. Cloverworks' visual direction shines as they are able to take what should have been a mundane slice of life premise and elevate it. The comedic transitions for Hitori are marvelous. The band performances are meticulously crafted and taking cues from real life locations, the background artwork really does make you feel like you're there in the city and towns with the cast. While it may not be as action-packed as some safer entries this year, the emotional resonance is there. The character work is also there. This is a relatable story with great visuals and a fulfilling narrative. There was never any question that this would be my favorite anime of the year. So that was 2022 in anime. I truly loved watching all these shows and making this list, a year-long labor of love that I don't mind taking part of. I hope it was your liking and piqued your curiosity to check them out. Here's to another great year and that 2023 is filled with even greater content. Thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed this list, hit the like button, share the video, and subscribe to the channel to keep up with my seasonal anime reviews, manga content, and much more. So for one final time, thank you for a wacky and wild 2022. Stay safe, God bless, I'll catch you on the next one.